Hello and welcome to this week's episode of In Distress, a podcast where I talk about nonsense in the cover of my childhood bedroom. Um, if you're subscribed to this channel or for the audio listeners, this doesn't really apply to you guys, it's for the YouTube people, but um, if you're here for uh, basketball, this is not the podcast for that. Um, I'd be on here talking about my feelings and things I'm going through in life and things that I'm learning and pop culture stuff when I feel like it. And yeah, so if you're staying... Really great to see you and have you here. Anyways, but um, this week's activity to keep me on the podcast. Actually, I do want to say I recorded last week's episode. It's on this camera. Well, actually, it's on my phone, but I didn't. I just didn't upload it because I had to do something else. And um, actually, I just got home from like spending like the day with my uncle and my sister. And it was really fun. And I just think sometimes I forget like how important it is to spend time with people um and yeah I wanted to say that but I did record last week's episode and I'm gonna post it later this week and I need to catch up on the episodes I'm probably like five episodes behind and for that I'm sorry but I am on time this week well sort of kind of because now it's Sunday but I still showed up so we're gonna be okay this week's activity my friend, it's her birthday. Yes, this is a flask. Um, my friend, it's my friend's birthday um, next week, and we're supposed to be going and hanging out and stuff. And um, she has like a little like gift registry thing, but oh, my friends know that I'm unemployed and I don't make that money like that. So I was like, hey, girl, now what if I got you a flask because she said she wanted one? What if I got you one and decorated it? So I got these, and actually it was a two pack on Amazon. And so I have two and they came with these like um, funnel things to help you pour the drinks in, right? And two shot cups. But anyways, um, I was like, so I guess I'm gonna be designing that. And then I think I'm just gonna paint it. I was going to like um, do like stickers and stuff, but I think like, painting it and stuff and I have time to do that because I don't have anything else going on really so I was kind of like I think doing that would be more personable and yeah so we're I'm gonna be doing that while I'm talking on here but if I'm honest let's just get into the stuff guys I'm really struggling well actually I'll start by talking about today I was um I went out, it was my sister's birthday like a couple weeks ago, and we hadn't like, usually we hang out with my uncle like one-on-one -on -one for like mine or her birthday, and we just like go out and try like new like restaurants or whatever around Atlanta, and we try to place. I personally, I'm not going to say where it was, but I will not be returning. It was not that great. I was not that impressed with it, but we went and did that. And then we got ice cream and I can't eat ice cream because I'm lactose intolerant. And I got this oat milk ice cream from Brewster's. It was not very good. It tasted like oatmeal. So if you don't want that flavor, go ahead and uh, skip that. Okay. And then after that, we went bowling and we bowled for like an hour and a half, which I do want to say I won all three games that we played. Okay. I, 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 I'm a bowling icon. I told them, I was like, y'all, it might take me a minute to like warm up it might take me a minute to get warm but um but I did big things and I was really proud of myself and um because I'd, I'd be losing bowling I'd be losing and I'm really not that great of a bowler um but and it's crazy because somehow I always end up next to whenever I go bowling it never fails that I end up next to people who literally have like their own bowling balls and have like the suitcase or like the little duffel bag with their bowling ball in it and there was this one time I went bowling with my with one of my friends from work and we were like sitting at the bowling alley we were like talking and stuff and just you know playing and the people next to us had like it was like a father and son and they, I guess they just go and bowl and just hang out, but they had like the professional bowling glove. I was like, bro. And you know, people who like bowl and like they bowl like for fun, like they're, it's their hobby or like it's their thing. They don't even be having the fingers in the holes. They just be tossing it down, down the thing and it be spinning and curving. And it is so intimidating because it's like, girl, can you go somewhere else with that? Like I, we are regular people. There needs to be like a, like a separate section for the people who are going and doing that. Or the people who are in leads, they need to be a separate, a separate little space for them. Cause it's so intimidating. But anyways, we were um there and then it, of course, it happens every single time I go to the bowling alley. The people who were next to me and my uncle and my sister, 
they weren't like pro they didn't have like the gloves but they had like special like special bowling balls and they had the little polishing wipe and and they were just just throwing it down there and curving it and like they're still clearly getting the hang of it but still still I was like this is absolutely ridiculous that this happens every single time I go to the bowling alley this is a little ridiculous but yeah so that was fun but we had a good time and I think like whenever I hang out with my like family or like even my friends because I'm actually supposed to be going to hang out with Mary who's a longtime friend of the podcast if you guys want to hear her episode it's available in audio version because I just started doing video like more recently but I would never ask Mary to come on and do video she didn't want to but um we're going and hanging out tomorrow and honestly I really need it we haven't really hung out since like maybe like June 1st when I first like the day after my last day of work and honestly like I just I really need like my friends and family and like I I don't think that I really like recognize or like realize how important like spending time with those people is until I haven't done it in a while and I get the opportunity to just like be in their space and be around them and yeah and um I went and spent some time with my grandma and I rode down there with my dad and like she lives she lives pretty far and uh we went and like spent time with her over the weekend and I talked about on the podcast before that she has um early onset like Alzheimer's and so that has been like a really tough thing to kind of like come to terms with and everything and also just because I think as I'm getting older I'm really realizing that like I'm gonna like experience grief like on a more personal level than I have ever before because I have never like lost anybody like I'm which I'm so grateful for I've never lost anybody like super close to me or anything I haven't lost a grandparent or um you know an aunt or like a close relative or anything and which I did talk about this on the podcast a couple of months ago I did lose somebody that I um went to school with and that was so like that's it's still crazy to me to like think that he isn't still here because he would like message me and like it's still like kind of like even when I think about it because I hadn't thought about it in a while until today when I was talking about it with my uncle and stuff and um I just like don't really think about like that often but it's just like so crazy that somebody was and like that people are like in their early 20s or younger or maybe even a little bit older, like, but they don't get to see, like, their 50s, they don't get to see their 40s, and that is so, like, it's so sad, and then on top of that, it's more than just sad, but, like, that's, like, the only word that I can, like, come up with to say, it's also just, it's really, like, wow, and when I think about it, it's, like, I have never experienced, like, losing somebody, like, really, really close to me, but even when he had passed away, like, he used to message me like almost like every month or two and just be like, hey, Tori, how are you doing? And like, we just catch up. And like, he would do that to so many people and just reach out to them. And um, even if you like didn't talk to them every single day, like he would, you know, send messages and just be like, hey, I hope you're good. What's up? And like, just catch up for like a couple of minutes. And I was just so, because I had talked to him like maybe a week or two before he passed away. And... I like even just still thinking about it it's just like wow like that's somebody who like really used to check on people and cared about people and now he's gone and it was also like to gun violence like (sighs) and this is one of those things where I hate to go down the hole but I just which I don't even hate to go down the hole this is real this is my life and I'm on here yapping I like I'm just I don't know what's I don't know what we're gonna do And I'm like kind of smiling about to giggle a little bit, but it really is like, I don't know like what there is to do anymore. Like the, like not even just the world, like there are moments when I do feel optimistic about where the world is going and all of these things. And there are moments when I feel like, um, I don't even really know how to say it. I, there are moments when I like really do have faith in humanity. And, you know, I think that sometimes even just everyday interactions and conversations, like, change my mind from being like not optimistic and hopeful to being optimistic and hopeful and so it's kind of like 
kind of sometimes as the days are going on, like I just have, I'm having less of those interactions and I'm having less of that belief that things can be better. And it really sucks because that's not really how I want to think or view the world. But at the same time, like that is reality and like me trying to pretend or like cover up that that's not, isn't going to change it. And I don't know. I think I'm, like I said, I had a really great day today, like with my uncle and my sister and hanging out and, um, I'm going to be hanging out with my other friends later this week. Cause technically it's Sunday now, um, when I'm recording this and then I'm going to go hang out with Mary tomorrow. And then hopefully I'll be talking to Paige, who's also another longtime friend of the podcast, but I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I just really need my people. And right now I think I need my people and, being unemployed is still really low-key tragic. I keep, you know, just reminding myself that, you know, like sometimes you do have to just go through like tough times. I think it just kind of sucks because I was talking to my uncle about this today, but I was like, it's just like one of those things where it's like if somebody, like anybody would just give me the chance to work, I would work really hard. Like I like to like I'm not gonna like not to be like that girl I like to work but like I do like I enjoy having something to do for the day like not having something to do for the day I know that people are like that it seems like fine like oh why wouldn't you want that it's completely different to not have something to do for the day but also still have like financial stuff that you need to take care of and you can't And then it's a completely other thing to like, oh, like have money and be fine and like not have something to do. And it's just like, it's getting, it's, it's, mm, it's becoming a bit of a burden and it's making me a little bit sad a little bit, but I try my best not to get like caught up in that thinking. But, um, I actually ended up mentioning this in last week's podcast episode, which when I post that, it's going to be later, but Alessia Carr has new songs out and on a lighter note. Um, I'm so excited about that because y'all know I love Alessia Cara. That's my girl, for real. That's my girl. That's my girl. And I'm just really excited for her album. And I'm sure that she's going to release another project that's going to get me through another stressful and hard time of my life. Anyways, I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to come on here and talk about because I don't remember. What did I even have? Did I have plans? I don't think I had plans. I think we're just going off the dome. Oh, I think I do want to talk about something. I'm not going to lie. I think I come on here and I talk about TikTok a lot. And there is like a part of me that's like, I don't really want to come on the podcast, on this podcast and talk about like the things that like vulnerable things, because I don't want other people to like be able to find it and use those things against me. And at the same time, that is like a direct opposite of like, the purpose of this podcast which is for people to like listen to it and like maybe giggle and laugh sometimes um but also to like know that they don't feel alone or like my hope is that the people like people who are struggling in life or have like similar thoughts or kind of questioning like the hopelessness of humanity and all of this stuff like the hope is that people will understand and see that it's not just them going through tough times it's not just them like struggling in life because life is hard and nobody has it mastered and we're always going to struggle with certain things. And I think something that I am really struggling with is like the internet because at the same time that there are like those days, and I talk about this all the time, but I'm going to keep beating the dead horse until I overcome it, which I don't think that I'll ever overcome it the way that I like listen to other people talk about it. Um, But it's just like, I want to believe that people who I do not know don't have power over me. And it's not that they do. It's just that sometimes they do. It's not all the time, but it's like, if somebody catches me on a bad day, yeah, for sure. And, and I, and I hate that because it is like, this is the internet and it's not about people agreeing with my opinion so much so as it is like, me believing that there's a respectful way to go about that and people not adhering to that. But at the same time, it's like, I'm saying that, but not everybody's going to handle things the same way that I handle them. Right. And I think that's something that I am really, which 
seems crazy that I never really acknowledge, which like, here's the thing. I've had this thought before. And the thought is that I've never like really paid attention to how much emotion goes into sports for people who watch them. And I've never ex- like, it's not that I've never thought about that. Like when, when like I love the Golden State Warriors and this past season, I really like the past two seasons. And I feel like they've been able, like I've, I've seen and believed that they would be able to do something better than they did that season. And then when they didn't come through on that belief, it was like the disappointment that I felt was like, dang, like I see so much potential here and I see like certain people wanting to win but it's just like they don't I don't know if it's like an if it's like an effort thing on like the whole teams and I'm gonna get to my point in a minute I don't know if it's like an effort thing for like the entire team or if it's just like the cards aren't just are just not falling where they need them to and I think when I think about that I'm like that's a different emotion than like me being angry or upset and so when I think about that, I think about what I used to think emotions were wrapped in for sports, which was like the, the gambling side of like, I put my money on this and people do get very upset about their money. Like people get very upset about their money. And to me, because I don't, I don't enjoy taking risk with something that I don't have a lot of. Right. So like I'm unemployed, my bank account, the funds aren't funding. So it's like I, and even in the future, because I've experienced this before of like not having access to like a ton of money or resources or whatever, it's like, I would never go and put my money and like bet on somebody else's performance in the event that they lose. If it's like, oh, like I'll like do one offs, like, oh, I think so-and-so is going to win. And then when they don't, it's like "Mm, crazy. They didn't win. They lost. That's a shame. And it's like, because I didn't go and bet something and risk something, I'm not losing anything, right? So it's just like, dang, they lost. That's a shame. And it's like, I feel a different emotion than anger because I didn't put money on the line for that, right? And when I think about that, those are like the emotions that I've associated with sports throughout my life. Not the emotions that people are associating with sports with like sports, which (laughs) this is a difficult conversation because it's like, and, and the thing is that honestly, this is my podcast and I'd be on here talking about whatever I want. So I'm gonna keep doing it. I like, again, like what I said at the beginning, I want to believe that people on the internet do not have power over me, which most days they don't. But if they catch me on a bad day, my feelings are probably, my feelings probably got hurt by something or like I probably got annoyed by something and I'm not going to lie. Like the other day, and I talked about this on my other episode, but it's fine. Um, but I was feeling a little controversial like the other day. And so I went and I had a conversation that was like involving race and the WNBA and like, it was like, oh yeah, again, I understand 1000% people aren't always going to agree with you and stuff. What I hate, And really, it's not even it's not even that I hate it or like I feel angry about it. I just feel disappointed. Like, I'm so disappointed that when it comes to certain conversations that involve race and sports or the treatment or like how the media pushes certain agendas and that goes for like anything. It doesn't even have to be sports. It could be politics. It could be like something else that you believe deeply and firmly in like When it comes to how the message is being presented to you and the conversations that are happening in the world today, I am so disappointed. And it, and it's like, it's like such a deep disappointment that it turns that like it gets masked into anger for me. Like, and it's just like, I hate this. Like I thought, and maybe that was naive of me. I thought that we were in a very different place than we're in. Like, and I don't not understand the role that the 2016 election has played in that. But the fact that like 
the outcome of that is something that we're going to be feeling and dealing with for probably the rest of our lifetime. That makes me sick to my stomach. Like, because here's the thing. I, I've said this like on other episodes of my podcast before. And the thing is that I've grown up around people um, in the South and stuff who, you know, agree with Trump, vote for him, like ride hard for the man. And if I'm honest with you, I obviously don't understand that. There are a lot of black people who support Trump. And to those people, I'm so sorry that that is where you're at in life. I'm so sorry, genuinely. I, I can understand people just having different beliefs than me. I can, I'm 1000% okay with that. That is an everyday situation. I have relationships outside of the internet that where I can understand that. I have met Trump supporters. I've been, I grew up with a bunch of Trump supporters and these people are not inherently evil. The problem here is, I don't even know if you can really even say that anybody is necessarily evil or good. Again, that's a whole separate philosophical conversation. The problem here is that what he represents for me, for people who look like me, for women, for um, immigrants, for um, people who are trans, for people who are gay, for people who are queer, all of the things, anybody who falls under like certain specific umbrellas, he is a symbol of hate. Like he is that. And so it's really hard for me to sit here and like be just like, oh, well. Because at the end of the day, before now, I'm not going to say there were no blatantly racist people, but people used to have shame about it. And like now after that election and after he goes on the internet and on national TV and he goes to his rallies and he says this, that, and the third about people, it's like now people are like, oh, well, if this person with the mic says, is saying this, well, I can finally get mine off. I can finally say, well, yeah, I actually don't like immigrants. I don't like anybody coming to this country that isn't blah, 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 blah. And it gives them an excuse to now be not ashamed. And the thing is, is that, And really, even when you come down to like even like regular everyday things and the stuff that goes on in the Internet, there should be shame. There's no there's no reason for there not to be shame. If you're not shamed, how are you supposed to learn that you're wrong? And at the end of the day, like they just made being anti anything. okay. and I have a problem with that. And the fact that people don't have a problem with it is absolutely blasphemous to me because you will literally get people saying, oh, well, you know, I've just been a Republican all my life and uh, I agree with his uh, economic stuff. I'm sorry, economic stuff coming before people and human rights This is the problem. Like people do not have empathy anymore. Like not saying everybody, but there are a lot of people who go about life and just are not understanding of other people's situations. And because of that, it just makes the, it just, if you feel nothing or you don't care about what you're, what the person next to you has going on, if you don't care about anybody who doesn't have like, just because yes, I care so much about my friends and my family at the same time, if I hear about somebody going through or struggling with something and like, I hear their story and it's like, oh wow, like that, that really affected me. That really touched me. Like I'm feeling emotional about that. And I'm so sorry you're going through that situation. The fact that there are so many people who don't understand that feeling that is the problem. And even when you talk about this on a much broader scale, it's like when we're talking about animals, we're talking about the environment, it's like, why do you not care about where your kids are going to be growing up? Why do you not care about the environment? Why do you not care about these animals that we coexist in this world with? It's like this idea that like humans, because we're able to do Like we're able to communicate and there's so many of us that we own the earth and that we can do whatever we want and we can make whatever decisions without ever having to experience like the consequences of that. It's become an insufferable situation. It's like every day there's something wrong and people just and it just and when you think about it, most of the problems that happen in everyday life just come down to people just don't care about each other. We're talking about people 
and gun violence when it comes to like road rage why are you getting why are you so upset behind the wheel that you're willing to kill somebody why are why like this again i get it that people like that sometimes you get angry when you're driving i get it people do stupid stuff all the time i get it but like somebody losing their life over maybe not putting a blinker on is absolute insanity like and it comes down to that people do not care about each other the way that they used to or it's again it's not everybody but it's not a loud majority of people who care about each other and everything is about competition and everything is about I need to get mine first everything is about I come first everything is about greed it's about money it's about all of this stuff it's about the way things look and it's about having the best things and it's like at what point do you sit down and you like acknowledge hey I am actually to blame in the cause of some of the things that are going wrong in this world. And the fact that people aren't having that sit down conversation with themselves. What are we doing? That's absolutely disgusting to me. I'm disgusted and it's nasty. And I'm going to sit here and I'm gonna post this on TikTok. And again, I need to go back to the TikTok thing. I think this, this really just comes down to like, I talked about like the Caitlin Clark and Andrew Reese thing and, Again, not to make this like about basketball because this podcast isn't about basketball, but it's just like I've never realized how much emotion is in that conversation and you can't compare it to anything else. And people want to say, well, it's like Magic and Larry and I don't care about that. There is very different like outside and like external things that are going into this conversation that we're not going into that Magic and Larry Bird conversation. But actually, let me not even say that because I don't know because I wasn't alive. So I would know nothing about that. I would know nothing about that. At the end of the day, this is like people who have had to hang on and like hide their hate inside of them for specific races of people or for or for people who um, immigrated here. Like these are people who have had to like keep that hate inside of them. And now they've been shown that it's okay, quote unquote, that it's okay to hate people and to spread all of this vitriol and nastiness and all this harmful rhetoric about people and their identity in their identities, whether it's about gender or sexuality or whatever, like they've been made to believe that it's okay because somebody came on the mic and said it is. And now because of that, we're having these other conversations and people are so afraid to acknowledge that, hey, yeah, some of you are racist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Some of you are. And like I, I I have said this before, I would respect it a whole lot more if people just came out and blatantly said that. I like this girl because she's white. I like this girl because of so-and-so. I would respect it a lot more because like pretending and hiding behind this idea that no, it's just because of this, that, and the third. No, it's not. It's not. And if you really sat down and had a conversation with yourself about it, if you were really ready for the conversation, you'd be able to acknowledge that sit down with it, fix it, learn and grow. But people don't want to admit they're wrong about things. People don't want to open their eyes to new things. And it's not even to say that I believe that everything that I believe is 100% right. Because I'm sure that there have, because there have been moments when I've learned that maybe the way that I was thinking about something wasn't like a decision that I had made to believe like I think sometimes that you grow up in certain environments and you believe certain things because that's what you've grown up being around and that's what you've grown up seeing and I think once you get older it is on you to take that step and ask yourself why do I believe these things like why do I believe the things that I believe why don't I believe in this thing? What are my thoughts on this? Like at some point you have to sit down and ask yourself, what do I think about this? And then go and hear other people's perspectives on it. Like you can't just, just because you've grown up and I get it, like it's your parents, it's your family, whatever. It's friends that you grew up with or whatever. Just because they believe something doesn't absolutely mean that it's 100% correct. Just because I believe in something doesn't mean it's 100% correct. But for the most part, I've gone out there and like 
decided what I think about something, then I've gone, done research and been like, okay, well, what does this side say? And what does this side say? And then where am I at? Am I in the middle? Where am I at? That's how I feel about abortion. When I was in high school, I, which I, me talking about abortion on this podcast again after what happened that last time is really crazy, but it's like you go and when I was growing up, I didn't really understand the conversation. I think what's really great about hot button issues, I guess, is that media will, will like, you know, movies and TV shows will like address that kind of stuff in different ways. And obviously just because a popular piece of media says something doesn't always mean that that's what everybody thinks or that that's like the right answer quote unquote. But I think for me, when it came to abortion, it was like, oh, what is that really? Like, obviously you hear about that kind of, you hear about it, but you don't like, what are my thoughts on that? And so I think I was like 15, 16. And I was like, I don't remember exactly what was happening around that time. So it was like, it was like 2016, 2017. And I think something was happening because I remember my Tumblr page was like, it was like people were talking about abortion a lot. And I was like, girl, what, what is going on around here? And well, actually that was a Trump stuff and that actually makes a lot of sense anyways. But you know, that was becoming like a very much bigger topic of conversation and especially like in legislation and stuff like that. And so I was kind of like, okay, well, I do need to kind of decide like where, where I'm standing or at least, you know, get some background research on like where I'm standing on the conversation. So I went and I'm reading through the thing and I'm like, okay, what does it really mean to be pro-life? What does it really mean to be pro-choice and all that stuff? And, you know, you sit there and you read the stuff and to me, for me, it doesn't really come down to anything outside of the fact that to me, when I ask myself, dang, when it comes to human rights, what does that mean to me? Human rights is really, it's a lot of things actually. But in terms of this, it is when I take a step back and I think about what it means to be pro-life and pro-choice, I'm like, mm. Honestly, whatever other people have going on has absolutely nothing to do with me. And on top of that, whatever somebody wants to do with their body, they deserve to be able to do with their body. They deserve to be able to make that choice and nobody should be making that choice for them. And to me, that's what that comes down to. It doesn't come down to the, the the people giving me statistics and all that stuff because if you want to go statistic for statistic like we can go we can go bar for bar if you want to do that we can do that because if we're going to be honest like and people are going to hate this they will because they've hated it before but when we're talking about being pro-choice like and banning abortions nobody's stopping having abortions that's what you think is happening. It just stops people from being able to have access to safe abortions. And so when you think about it, it's like, well, girl, if they're going to do it anyways, they might as well be able to do it one safely. But secondly, they should just have the option and they should have the choice to be able to make that decision for themselves. Nobody should be. And that, like I said, this is at the end of the day, what a lot of stuff comes down to, to me. People should be able to make the decisions that they want to make for their life. I like, it's like the same. It's not the same. It's, it's a, it's a slight analogy. It's slightly poor. It's not really on the same level, but it's like your parents going and like growing up, like they're telling you what you need to do with your life. And you're like, girl, I don't want to do that. I want to do this because I like this. And just because you think that that's what I should be doing. And just because it's going to be this, that, and the third doesn't mean that it's something that I want to do. And just because it's something that you want me to do doesn't make me want to do it anymore. And this is my life. And at the end of the day, I have to live with the decisions that I make. And so I want to make my own decisions decisions. The same way that you have that conversation, this is to me. That's what this comes down to. And that's why nobody is ever going to be able to go bat for bat debate with me. Like we're not doing that. Like if you, like I said, if you want to get into it, sure, let's do that. Like the fact that a lot of women, 
um, get abortions and it's not related to just, oh, I'm using it as a form of, um, what do you call it? I'm using it as a form of contraception. A lot of people are not using abortions in that way. Okay. And the problem is that people like to sit there and pretend that they, they, they have no, like, it's just confused. It's not confusing. It's just upsetting to me. Like, why, why shouldn't people get the opportunity and the chance to decide what happens to them? And people just want to go and immediately just go up to bat for other parts of this conversation that that's like, people don't understand how this affects them. Like they're so busy, like ripping into women in that decision and just going up to bat for a baby who's not even a baby yet okay if we're really gonna get if we're really gonna get into the technicalities of it and people are going about oh it's the heartbeat and all this stuff and it's like girl please shut the hell up first of all secondly you don't understand that if this right gets stripped away from you they can start doing a whole bunch of other stuff this is a gateway law and when Roe v. Wade was overturned, like now you're seeing a lot of the effects of that. Like a lot of women who are having kids, like, and maybe like, there have been like a couple of different things. And this is actually the thing that I never thought, I never was pro-life. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I just didn't really have an opinion on it. And then when I like started doing the research, it was like, there are a lot of reasons that people get abortions outside of the reasons that people think. Like there are a lot more reasons. And when you really get down into that conversation, it becomes very apparent. And that's when, again, empathy comes into the conversation. And even more than that, I think that people really like to like dehumanize women who do choose to have abortions because it's just not a decision that they would make for themselves. And so because they think that, well, I wouldn't do that. And so it's wrong. Just because you wouldn't do that in that situation doesn't make it wrong for somebody else. Like people are just not willing to really sit down and be like taking themselves out of the situation. And I think that that's that's really what the problem is sometimes. Like sometimes like there is a level of like people don't have any empathy for other people because they're not understanding of their situation. They don't even try to be understanding of the situation. But also some people are just so unwilling to remove themselves and their personal feelings about something from like the situation itself. And then the conversation becomes something personal that it it, it shouldn't be. If you look and take a step back, Roe v. Wade is really a gateway law. I'm telling you right now, if they sit there and they say women don't have the right to decide what happens to their body, basically is what this is. Women don't have the right to decide what's going on with their bodies. And then who knows what they could do next? They could be, mm, well, actually, now they could, they could just decide to make a law. Well, women actually aren't allowed to go outside um, Wednesday through Friday. So just because I felt like it. You don't like people don't understand that this choice, that this pro choice and pro life conversation or debate is a lot more and a lot deeper than what it appears to be. And this is why I really be sitting here and I'm like, we're doomed. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, well, what am I supposed to do? It seems obvious. Is it not? And then what's crazy is you have people every day like, okay, well, you know, y'all kind of need to start doing your research a little bit more. And people just don't. So it's like, it's like at the same time, it's like, girl, whatever happens to you happens at this point. Like I did the best I could, but it's also like, this is also affecting me. This is also affecting other people and people that I care about. And again, it's people thinking about other people outside of themselves. Like it could be let's talk about gun control for a second it could be like oh I have a gun and actually I've grown up around guns and me and my family we do the we abide by the rules you know we have our permits and you know we go out and we hunt and outside of that like you have a healthy relationship to guns right maybe that situation and it's like I have a gun I don't I don't really know what I'm trying to say here but maybe you've grown up around guns at the same time, just because you've grown up around guns doesn't mean that everybody who has a gun has a healthy relationship with it or has good intentions when they're using it. 
And again, this seems like a basic, this seems like the basic thoughts that should be running through people's heads. This seems like the basic logic, but it's not. All of a sudden it becomes, well, I have the right to bear arms and everybody should be able to have guns. And it's just like, just because you would be responsible with the gun doesn't mean that everybody deserves access to it because everybody's not you. That's just really what all of these things are coming down to. It's really just coming down to people putting themselves in situations and making these like debates and hot button topics and issues about themselves and not being able to sit back, remove themselves from the conversation, their personal opinions and what they would do in this situation and that situation and step back and think, what, what would this mean for like our country and our society if we stopped that? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. It's that simple. It's that simple. Sometimes you just have to challenge yourself to think one more step ahead, right? Because it's almost like some of these debates are like, you're almost there. You're knocking on the door, but you don't have the key and it's not open. It's like, you're so close. You're so close. If you could just challenge yourself one more step. Well, why do I think this way? Maybe I should do some research. Oh, Maybe I should remove what I would do personally in this situation, remove that from my direct opinion. And it's like, at the end of the day, if it comes down to it, I'm going to be honest, when it comes to abortion, it's like, well, I'm, if you're pro-life in your situation, doesn't mean that other people shouldn't have the ability to make that choice. Like, you can go and decide that for you. You can be pro-life. It, it doesn't have to be something that you force onto other people because you don't know their situation, you don't know their circumstances. And a lot of times, like, well, yeah, a lot of times people aren't getting abortions again for the reasons that people think they are. And I wish that people would be more understanding of that. This economy really sucks. It's hot ass, right? Unemployment, I'm down, I'm troubled. And it's like, why? And even when you just take a step back, it's like, why would I? For me personally, I really, sometimes I'm like, I want kids. And then other times I'm like, actually, I don't because I would never bring anybody into this world. I just wouldn't do it. And to me, it is like, when I take a step back, why would I want to bring somebody in this world to deal with the consequences of things that are happening in my lifetime right now? Why would I want to bring somebody into that? And again, just because that's my personal opinion doesn't mean that I'm out here saying, you shouldn't have kids. Everybody shouldn't have kids. I can remove myself from that and be like, I personally do not want to bring kids into this world because of the way things are looking right now. And I don't want to subject anybody else to this. So I'm not going to do that. I don't have problems with anybody else doing what they want to do. That's other people's lives. That's their choice. That's their decision. Are you seeing, are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? Just because that's not something I would do doesn't mean that I'm like, everybody shouldn't be having kids and we should make it a law. No more kids. That's stupid. That's stupid. Genuinely. Like there are moments when I'm like, "Mm." when it comes to guns, I'm like, guns are scary to me. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't grow up around guns and I didn't grow up hunting or any of the things. And when I think about guns, I don't think happy things. I don't. I do at times. I'm like, well, because I am a woman in this world, it is like, maybe I should get one so that I can protect myself and I can defend myself. Outside of that, I definitely understand why people want more gun control. And I think there should be more gun control. Like just because I would use one to protect myself. I know that there are people out there who would not be using a gun for that reason. I know that. I've seen that. I remember there was this one time I was at school and uh, we were in lockdown. Okay. 
And when I tell you I was, I'm not going to say shitting bricks because that would be a little too much, but I was definitely worried and nervous. Like you have no clue what that feeling is like until you're in there. And again, this is just me not even like actually like directly experiencing like anything like direct danger, but like even just being like you having to hide somewhere in a classroom with people that you're learning with every day that you've grown up with because somebody's thing like doesn't want to somebody. It's crazy. And then it's just like, and, it, and people like, and the thing is, is that like all of these things are like, again, I've grown up around people who have different beliefs and thoughts than me. And at one point it was like, yeah, I can be friends with people who have different beliefs than me. And truthfully, it sounds like a good, it sounds great in theory. In theory, it sounds really great to have friends who fall on different spectrums of stuff like that. And if it's down to like smaller issues, yeah, sure. I can have friends that have different beliefs than me. And even like I, a lot of the times have done research and understand the other side of the debate. The problem still lies in some of these things are not things that are up for debate for me so it's just like and and that's when and and honestly like growing up I used to be like I don't understand people who think like that but now to be at this stage and of life and like to be older and to be at a point in society where it's like there is a vast difference between some of where people stand on things and where other people stand on other things And like people have said, this is a very unprecedented time, but to be in living in a society where there's so much division, yeah, I struggle to be friends with people who have different beliefs than me on certain hot button issues because at that point, it really does come down to we just have different morals. I respect your thoughts and whatever. I disagree with them, but I... I respect them and it doesn't really need to go beyond that. Like if people are like, oh, if you're xenophobic or transphobic or homophobic, girl, at this point, we're, we can't, we're, we're not cool. We're not cooling. We're not cooling. And honestly, like I said, I respect certain different like opinions or whatever. Not those. I don't respect opinions of hate. Like, if you have, like, a different, like, thought, like, if it's, like, oh, pro-life, pro-choice, okay, well, that's more of a, mm -mm. but when it comes down to, like, homophobia, xenophobia, stuff like that, yeah, you can keep that. You can keep that. We're good. I'm good off that. And I don't think that I would ever feel bad about that. Yeah, I don't, actually. Yeah. Again, I understand I understand your side for the most part, except for like hateful stuff like that. When it comes to like the pro life, pro choice, um, that those kind of debates. But when it comes down to like the stuff that's really about morals and ethics, yeah, no. And I don't think that you really realize like how important those beliefs are to you until you get older. Like when you're a teenager, it is like, oh, I can kick it with anybody. We're chill. We're I can vibe with anybody and all the things and. Once you get older and you really see the world for what it is, mm -mm, I fear. And I think sometimes I think about how that could affect or how me having strong beliefs in those things can affect like the things that I want to do in the world and in my life. And it really does come down to like standing on business on some of these things. Like a, a lot of the things that I just talked about are things that I'm not moving on. And that nobody can ever move my opinions on. And at the same time that I'm saying that, it is like, I understand that there are other people who believe the direct opposite from me and they will never be moved on those things. And I don't know. It's really tough. It's a tough conversation. It's a tough thought. But yeah, I did want to come on here 
and just yap for a little bit. So this was really fun for me. I don't want to take up a bunch of time because it's we're almost at like 50 minutes. But um, I really had a great time today. This was fun. It was fun to come on here and just yap, you know, off the dome. We had a good time. Um, I'm trying to think of like if there was anything else I wanted to say maybe. Or yeah, back to the TikTok thing for a second. <laughs> Um, you know, just to close the conversation circle. I think that I definitely do get annoyed with comments and TikToks and stuff. Because the thing is that, like, if you have a different opinion, like, I don't really need you to, like, go back and forth about it. Like, there are certain things where it's just like, okay, scroll away. You can just click not interested. Like, you don't have to go, like, we don't have to get into a back and forth about it. If you disagree with me about it, it is what it is. But, like, to sit there and, like, call me names on my phone is insane. It's insane. It's insane. And I'm going to be honest, like, again, if you catch me on the wrong day, I'm blocking you. Again, I'm totally open to having conversations about certain things, but there are a lot more people who aren't willing to have conversations and just want to argue on the internet than are willing to just have a conversation and be open to somebody else's opinion. So it's just like that. So there are a couple people in these past couple days who did get blocked. They did. They did. And it really just be, mm, I just don't want to be bothered. So block. And I feel like that's okay. And really, there are some people who disagree with me sometimes. And again, it's not even about people disagreeing with me because it is, it's whatever. But like, there's a respectful way to disagree with somebody or to share your opinion without it being like a punching down type of thing or like a, well, no, you're wrong. Here you go. Another blackie. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa. You took it too far. You took it too far. And that's really what it comes down to. Some people, some of the people, um, they're taking it too far. Yeah, you take it too far and it's like, ooh. And it's one of those things where it's like, you kind of have to like nip it in the bud now. Cause if I wait to nip it in the bud later, people are gonna try to take advantage of me. And one thing I'm not gonna do is let people on the internet uh, hurt my feelings on my phone and think that that's okay. Or for them to like say crazy stuff and for that to be like an okay thing for them to like spew rhetoric. So it's crazy. Anywho. I do want to thank you guys for listening. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Hold on. Navigating the internet is just hard, I think. Yeah, that's where I'm ending this episode. Navigating the internet is hard and other people's opinions. Like, I don't know. It's just so different when it's like opinions of people that you're like, or like opinions from people that you know and like interact with personally and in regular life than it is like interacting with people on the internet and because people on the internet really do be unhinged and I think that there are some people on the internet who are unwell yeah they're unwell but anyways this was really fun and I'll be back next week we hope with uh hopefully some brighter things to talk about because this was low-key a little depressing so I'll see you guys next week thanks for hanging out I'll see you guys bye